Hey Floss Tube! This is Tara with Wold Woman Crafts and it is not an April Fool's joke. We are here on April 1st. Um, I am rallying <laughs> because as you will hear, yesterday was the last day of the Black Needle Society's um, Winter and Stars Hollow Retreat and as you will see, it was a busy retreat for me and I am <laughs> exhausted and a little bit talked out but um I have so much to share that I definitely don't want to wait any longer and honestly I feel like I really need to consider like a every two or three weeks situation at, at least at least when months are gonna go like this but this was a this is a particularly crazy month oh yeah okay because we had um you know battle of the whips for March so there's like 14 projects to show you I have my whip go fully finished objects one of which is the Dark Queen, so stick around for that. Um, and lots of exciting updates. It's just been a really good stitchy year so far, what can I say? So without further ado, let's jump into things. I hope you're doing well. Um, number one, I had a well, I had two finishes in the month of March and both of them were starts and finishes since I saw you last. Um, oh yeah, I brought my little board today. So the first one is um, National Umbrella Month. So this is part of the, um, you can see the nerd hoop much. I haven't ironed it obviously, but this is part of the Celebrate All Year Stitch Along, hosted by the Black Needle Society. So these charts are all designed by uh, Katie Landis of the Black Needle Society. And this is the March chart. I love the little rainbow. I love these little like minty clouds. They're so fun. Um, this is stitched on 32 count blue gray linen by Zweigert. And this is the last one this is the last one of the stitch along on this fabric. We'll be moving to that navy for next, for April this month, um, which is actually National Astronomy Month. And I've seen the pattern already and maybe I'll pop it up over my face, but it looks so cute. I wanna stitch on it today, but I am forcing, this video is helping me to not stitch today because even though I stitched like nuts <laughs> over the past few days, I still want to stitch today, but I really need to give my body a break because I can feel it. I can feel the decisions I've made in my forearms and wrists. <laughs> and so we need to relax today um, and probably tomorrow, but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, this is a start and finish and this will go in the little frame. If you have not uh, caught up with me recently, there is a little standee um, that I won't spend time showing right now because we have a lot to get through but um it will go in there and you will see it and I think the other two are on my Instagram if you do want to see it so this is I haven't shown bags in a while but this is in my 805 stitcher bag that I got in the nice list box this past year from the Black Needle Society it's a little frogging bag I die and I added um from the Black Needle Society's uh Saturday morning stitching box that we just got the this serial starter charm very uh feeling very appropriate for me right now so next up I mean this is kind of huge but I mean this is sort of where where she goes in the show <laughs> um is my winter and stars hollow piece so if you are not familiar with this stitch along um well it's not a stitch along so much um if you're not familiar with this piece uh the black nail society um started three years ago now this is the fourth year um sort of like seasons in stars hollow so they started with autumn then they went to summer spring and now winter is the final month so i've officially finished this piece but i'm going to hold it in suspense a little bit so this is the winter in stars hollow chart um and so these came with virtual retreats, which is what I mentioned earlier. So I have been stitching on this madly. And last year at retreat, basically I um, didn't have any intentions of trying to like finish during the retreat, 
but I started like Wednesday night when the retreat started and stitched on it all weekend. And when things wrapped up on Sunday, I was about 91% done. And so I kind of was like, oh, I bet if I really put my mind to it and go in with that goal that I could finish this um, during the next retreat and not have it like run over at all. So that was a challenge I put to myself and I succeeded and actually succeeded beyond my own expectations, really. I was able to, I started this Wednesday night at eight o'clock Eastern, cause that's when the first like intro live happened and um, finished it around three o'clock on Sunday. So I actually had to pull a different piece for the last stitching challenge because I finished this in advance of the last stitching challenge, which I would have never guessed that that happened. I mean, I, like I said, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I put respectively at least 2,200 stitches in this each of those days. <laughs> so that is definitely more than I have ever really stitched. And to do it back to back like that, as I said, my body is feeling it. Um, but I will now reveal, so this is the, that was the winter piece. And this is now the whole chart. <laughs> All right, let's slow pan. So we have spring, and then from the guitar over is summer, and then we get to fall or autumn, and lastly, the winter chart that we've been admiring. So the total dimensions of this is 380 by 95. This is probably the biggest finish I've ever had. I'm very certain it is, especially because it's full coverage. Um, so for the totality of this, I started this, um, cred, I thought I brought my little information sheet over here. Let me see if I can locate it quickly. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Oh. I'm gonna mutilate it to try to look at it now. <laughs> um, I have a little like stitching tracker that I had with this. So I officially started this entire thing um, January 10th, 2022, um, because I didn't know about the retreat at the time of uh, autumn. So I like bought the box for Summer and Stars Hollow and then was able to purchase the Autumn and Stars Hollow piece. Um, which I finished that January and then um, was able to participate in the retreat, which was June that year. So it's also interesting looking at these numbers. I spent <laughs> less and less time on these every single year. So autumn, I spent a total of 17 stitching days on. Summer, I spent 12. And then in spring, which was the one last year, I spent a total of six days. I finished it the day after the retreat. And then for winter, I spent five, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, five days. Um, I don't recommend this strategy for anyone. I probably will not do it again. And um, they announced since this series is complete, the next um, series that they'll be doing for their more like casual um, community focused uh retreat is Downton Abbey. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely get on their email list, check it out. Um, I think hypothetically that should be ha starting next year. And right now we don't know how many years that's going to run or how they're really going to divide it, but it is going to be Downton Abbey. And I don't really show my backs usually, but I thought this was kind of funny. <laughs> so noticing that I spent less and less time on these, I feel like my backs, while my stitching may have improved, my backs got worse. <laughs> And I think it's partially the design. Like, so for example, for Winter and Stars Hollow, the little Christmas lights on the house, I just carried those over. So I feel like the back. And then like, I got a knot in here. I feel like the back on Winter and Stars Hollow is like way more janky than some of these other backs. Like, these don't look too bad. Too funny. That cracked me up. So pretty tight margin. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I kind of thought for sure that I would um, frame this, but I was talking to some fellow retreat goers 
and someone mentioned um that's it. Janelle from Coffee, Wine, and Stitching Time mentioned that she might try to mount it on like a board, which I think would be really cute, kind of like a flat finish and then put it on a board. And I think you could like, you could decorate it with a lot of little Gilmore Girls knickknacks. So I kind of like that idea. I don't know. I mean, I'm on a mission to fully finish more things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that like, I want to finish things immediately when I'm done stitching. So I'm okay to let it sit for a while. And honestly, it doesn't feel real that it's done because it's been a couple years of like finishing a piece and then just sitting and waiting and it not really being done. So I think it's gonna take a while for it to really sink in that that's fully, fully done and no nothing else is coming. But anyway, so that was quite an achievement. Um, so those were my two starts and finishes for the month. And then I had two fully finishes, which were both my Whipgo calls. So Whipgo, if you have been around FlossTube, I'm sure you've heard of this, is the brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff on FlossTube, Instagram, Facebook. And she call, you make a bingo board with any, any goals relating to your stitching, basically, is how I interpret it. A lot of people do put their works in progress or whips on the board. So it's like a bingo for your works in progress. But some people do um, lots of different things. So, for example, I saw and dang it, is it Crafty Teachers DIY? I'm not sure. I think it was Crafty Teachers DIY or Dr. Christy. I forget. One of those two are the ones that are also doing the fully finished object board, the FOGO FFOGO board, and I borrowed that concept for this year. So I have my board is almost exclusively. Um, fully finishing things that are already done. I have a couple of new starts in like a little small series in there, but so far we haven't pulled any. So anyway, all that to say, you got a little sneak peek, but my, one of my calls this month was for Hands on Designs, which is Pantry. So this is the piece. This is Hands Just to Helping. So it's a little janky. It's not even, but it is done. And that is what I love about it. <laughs> Um, I actually found a little baggie with three little Halloween charms. So each of my jars, because this is a series of three, will get a charm eventually. So the second one of these jars is already stitched, and the third jar is on the whip go board as a as a start, actually. So hasn't been called yet, but yeah, I just put a little orange cording on it. Found this nice little velvety ribbon from like a Michaels trim pack. And then yeah, got this little charm. So these are stitched on 32 count slate from Fabrics by Stephanie. I know it's a Fabrics by Stephanie. I'm not confident it's slate. And it uses almost all the called for. This is all classic color works, but the gray is a color and cotton. Um, yeah, so this is gonna go to my sister. Um, she used to have a Halloween tree. She's gotten rid of it because it got a little uh, scrungly, <laughs> but time for her to get a new one because the ornaments are coming. <laughs> so that was great. And then, drum roll please, I fully finished my Dark Queen of the Year. I screwed back for this one. Ah! <laughs> Here she is. Let's just all admire her. Um, so I did, in my last video, I believe I put a call out to say, how do I um, frame behind glass with beads? And the answer is I did not. <laughs> um, at least for now, she is glassless and I kind of really like how it looks. I sort of got over it because I was like, well, if I find a solution later and want to put her behind glass, like that's easy because she is laced onto foam core. So this can come apart. There are some frame jobs I've done that would maybe not be as amenable to coming apart, <laughs> but this one is. So this frame is a custom ordered frame from Modern Wall Framing Co on Etsy. I'll have it linked below. Um, if you watched my last video and I think you can see it in the thumbnail, I purchased a very similar frame for my Mushrooms of Hyrule piece. That one is a narrower diameter and a different color, but it is this like rustic burled style, um, which I thought was really nice. But I think for her, I liked having the wider edge because I feel like she has 
more gravitas and needed the extra balance. And for me at least, it completely nailed it. It's everything I wanted for this frame. Um, I'm really proud of my lacing job on it, to be honest with you. I fussed with it for a long time, but I'm really proud of it. And so this is the back. I have not yet put my little info sticker on it. And I just remembered, I was like, she has a tracker, a project card too, that I remember some of you when I showed that finish that I need to preserve on the frame. So I need to make like a little envelope or something on the back as well to store that info for the days that I worked on her because this was a year long stitch along by Autumn Lane Stitchery, if that is not something you're familiar with. And this is um, Under the Sea Fabrics, uh, goodness, I haven't talked about this one in a while. Nightshade, it's one of the called fours. Um, and everything else is called for in this piece. And it looks good. It looks pretty dang good if I do say so myself. So yeah, she has a spot on the wall. I found a spot that I like. Unfortunately, again, it is ooh, not in frame for you, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so yeah, she is housed. She has a home. Amazing. So that is all the finishes and fully finishes I had this month. I have two starts to share with you. Um, so the first one really should be a finish, but we will get there as soon as I'm off my <laughs> bed rest, Julie, I promise. So this is my team, hashtag team rogue round robin, ink circles round robin. So basically a group of us got together realize we goofed the formal system for like the the big group that's coordinating and ink circles round robin and we're doing our own thing is the short version but I have Julie of Julie and Stitches 16's piece right now so this is Green Damsel by Ink Circles and Julie in very classic Julie fashion pulled custom threads and they look amazing so let me make sure I have yeah Okay, so yeah, here's our threads. Showed these last time. So two Night Stalkers calling, and then this is a most sale. And this is where I am at. So Julie stitched uh, this quadrant, and I am over here. So I've made great progress, not quite there yet. This is 36 count, picture this plus in Regency. And we are stitching this one over two and I love it. It's beautiful. I love her colors. I love, yeah, I just like that green and the orange. It's just so good. It's so good. I do feel like I goofed a little bit and maybe it, I overstepped, I'm overstepping half a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to Miriam and Julie. If I shortchanged you a couple stitches, I am not built for this apparently, for this math challenge. Um, but yeah, so this, I really need to finish this up. Because I'm traveling this week, it might not be till next week, but everyone's been super um, lenient and lax. This has been a very relaxing, fun group um, to do this with. So, I know that they won't begrudge me too much for, for taking a little bit longer, but I know Julie's about ready to send hers, so I need to get it together. Um, so that one is going great. And then my other start, so this was my um, panic start at the end of the Gilmore Girls retreat because we had one more stitching challenge and I didn't have the Gilmore piece to stitch on. So if you've been a part of these um, virtual retreats before. There are a couple of different types of games and stitching challenges. I'll go into more detail about like my recap at the end, but um, they there are prompts for stitching challenges and you have to um, either work on the retreat piece, which for this one would be Winter and Stars Hollow, uh, or you have to meet the prompt to get like full points for your stitching challenge, which points contribute to a raffle prize um, at the end. So I I hadn't even looked at the stitching challenges to be honest with you because I knew I wanted to stitch on the piece the whole time and while I thought I could 
you know, finish it by the end, I definitely thought I would be like up against the wire, like last minute stitching. And I didn't think there'd be a reality where I would need a second piece for this retreat. We'll put it that way. But I lucked out because then when I did look at it, it was um, the piece, the challenge was to stitch on something that brings you joy. So that's all my cross stitch, obviously. Um, I mean, you know, some more than others on certain days, but <laughs> so it was pretty much a free for all. So I was so happy about it because one thing I had failed to do prior to the retreat was start the March installment of D's 20 stitches stitch for pride. Um, I didn't get to start it before the retreat and I just kind of had to let it go. And I was like, it's fine. I'll, I'll just get to it when, um, the retreat is over, but I didn't have to because I started it. So, um, here it is. And I'll put a picture of the full thing over here, hopefully. But, um, so yeah, this is March's drop and the artist is Stephanie H. She, who is a Taiwanese ceramicist. And she primarily, uh, she, like her niche kind of at the moment is rep making, um, ceramic pieces that are sort of models of common food items in what you it started as things that were in her childhood home but now um items that are across like any of the Asian like diasporas homes people can like request um stuff I went on her Instagram and you can see a bunch of polls that she did of like which way do you remember this packaging when you were a kid and um so she's doing that for like all sorts of different uh nationalities and experiences which is cool but this is going to be a big sriracha bottle so I am doing all uncalled for colors um and so this month I chose from live and die LA um tequila sunrise and I quite like it the called for kind of variegated between like a pink and a green and it's really cool and really unique and I certainly don't have anything like it but I really love the way this is going um so yeah I'm happy with it and this is on fox and rabbits 32 count baked clay and I'm just loving the way this is popping I haven't decided uh if I'm gonna fill the bottle or not but I feel like the negative space is working okay We'll see how it goes. I think I'm definitely going to do the whole bottle and then decide if I want to fill the negative space with either like white or a different solid. Um, but yeah, I'm liking it. And then obviously since it's April 1st, we have the next drop, which will be, I wrote this down, the Kiss and Tell Collective. So I have to go learn about them. I don't know about them yet. Um... But that one is really cool and will be a fun pink. So I'm already, I'm, I'm already eyeballing some pinks on my floss wall. This has been such a fantastic project to not only learn and continue to grow in my knowledge base about queer artists, but um, to pull from stash. Like I am using some threads um, that are beautiful that I have not used yet. So it's really exciting to, to have that opportunity and I'm really liking the way it's coming together. So that's exciting. Unfortunately, that chart is not available for purchase anymore. D has, I think a highlight on their Instagram um, explaining that, that those charts might be sold separately at a later date. But um, unfortunately, if you missed the boat on that one, you're just gonna have to enjoy all the other beautiful um, works in progress right now. So definitely go follow that hashtag. Perfect. Okay. So those are my two starts and okay. So I have, I have two works in progress to show you that are sort of outside the realm of, um, the battle of the whips. So let's do those. So first up, is my oldest whip, which this is Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. And I am, in case you're wondering, because it's still, it is gonna be on the scroll frame, I will warn you. Um, so I started up here and I'm working like, you know, diagonal by diagonal. So I am on this blue cross stitch row right here. So you can see the next specialty band will be the bottom 
right corner. What even? Um, I am using not the charted colors that you saw there, so mine looks a little bit different, but this is the Dinky Dyes Silk Pack. And this is where I left it off. So for my like my self <laughs> assignment this month, I needed to finish this top half of this cross stitch band. And I did. And then I even was so excited because as soon as I get to change a color, I'm like raring to go. So, but this was a luscious color. I definitely was not tired of it by the end, but anytime I hit a new color, I'm, I'm ready to, to keep going. So you can see a little preview of the next color to come in this full flower motif. You can kind of start to see how that's going to look. Um, this is being stitched uh, one over one or one over two for the cross stitch. Um, on 28 count black Jobelin, um, I think by Zoigart. I got it on one, two, three stitch. And the specialty stitches are all one strand, except for I think there's like a satin stitch that called for two. But I like it. Like, I'm sure a lot of people would be extremely dissatisfied with this coverage, but I just think it looks so good. Um, so I'm really happy with that. And Technically, by this coming Sunday, I should be finished with this cross stitch row, but I'm traveling on Thursday. And as I said, I'm sort of on like, <laughs> I'm sort of benched at the beginning of this week. So this might be the first time I miss my sort of self imposed deadlines to meet my goal of finishing that by the end of the year. But that's okay. We'll just if that's what happens, that's what happens. We will let it let it ride. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the stats on that one. And then, um, oh, whoops, not you. You're not next. Don't jump the line. Next in my Laura Landis bag, these beautiful dragonflies, um, is my Dinosaur Forest. Uh, so this is by Al Forest Embroidery. And this is another one that I am challenging myself to finish by the end of the year, which was not originally the goal, but it is now. Um, we hit the top corner. I'm officially clear. <laughs> it's not a huge margin, but it's, it's plenty enough for sure. Um, and here's where we are. So since you saw it last, gosh, um, I think probably this is new. I mean, everything up here is new. And this little Ankylosaurus, I believe, is new. And this little guy. Um, it's looking good. It's looking cute. I'm having a good time still. The Motif a Week Challenge from Julian Stitches 16 is really helping me with this for sure. Which, again, everything, everything in Cross Stitch, it's all, like, we're all just trying to motivate ourselves. So, if you ever hear a challenge and you're like, I don't exactly want to do it like that, do it the way you want to do it. There is, you know, I've heard this said before, but there is no cross stitch police, okay? You're just trying to get good work on your pieces. So Julie's challenge was to do a motif a week, um, but that is not uh, ideal for me in this piece. So I took the total stitches since I have this digitally in Pattern Keeper, divided it by... Um, weeks in the year and that is 181 stitches so that is the goal I tried to meet every week sometimes I barely I just about hit 181 you know maybe hit like 185 some weeks I stitch 200 300 some of the stitches so um it fluctuates but it gets the piece out once a week and we're making good progress we're cruising I'm over 40 percent at this point um yeah and this, like, I started it in the middle, so you can see, like, getting over here will make it 50%, and then we'll have uh, this side. But I think these are some of the bigger dinosaurs. There's a Triceratops over here that's pretty chunky, but beyond that, I think I've gotten most of the bigger dinosaurs done. And this is a 32-count kit linen. I bought the kit from Al Forest Embroidery and, um, and their threads. So that's all good. And during the retreat, 
Laura, <laughs> I believe this is a Tula Pink fabric. The BNS ladies are really big Tula Pink fans. And they were like, oh, Tara, did you see that there's a dinosaur line coming out soon? It's freaking incredible. So maybe I will become a Tula Pink fan, but I do like this bag for it, but maybe, maybe it needs a new bag. Maybe it needs a dino bag. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have time for this. I'm struggling enough to keep up with the stitching. Okay. All right. Here we go. Get the, get my paper documentation out here. Um, so next up is my battle of the whips, which watching other people's floss tubes, I have, I have come to believe that this is originated from the Steel City Stitchers. Um, very exciting. So I thought through before I started filming how best to show these and I think I'm just gonna go bracket by bracket and then I'm just gonna put up, since I put my pictures up last time of all these pieces, we have nice before photos to compare to. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Seed one <laughs> was uh, my high counts small stitches bracket. And so first up was my, I didn't, this is not necessarily the order I stitched these in, but it all got done. This is my One Heaven and Earth Designs chart. This is The Astronomer by Miles Pinkney, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, this is regular size max color, um, if that, if you're a Heaven and Earth Designs stitcher. Um, and here's the progress. I basically did one column in the Royal Rose um, right here and um, yeah this is one over one full cross on 25 count on pre-gridded fabric. Uh, so looking here so this is funny so everything I did challenge stitching wise was like well into the 200s and a couple I crossed over 300 for my stitches in an hour because I did let me back up if you watched my last video, I debated the idea of having sort of like a battle of the losers <laughs> and picking the projects that lost every bracket to move forward because then you're like getting more progress on the piece that you're the slowest at stitching on as opposed to dumping a bunch of stitches in, a, in pieces that go really fast. But it basically is like having this in the bracket it's either going to lose immediately or if I was to do Battle of the, the Losers, it would win. <laughs> there would be no surprise as to who would win. This would win by a long shot because like I said, as I was starting to say, most of these I'm stitching around 250 plus an hour. Stitching on an hour, timing myself with this, I got 130 stitches. <laughs> it is extremely slow going comparatively. But that's okay. It did reinvigorate me. I do want to get back to it. And I really hope that I can kind of like my stitching schedule for myself continues to kind of pile up in ways that I'm not expecting. So I don't know when I'm going to have a good chunk of time to get back to it, but I am still liking it. And that's that. <laughs> so that one lost its bracket, obviously. Um, and then the next one, which won its bracket, and you will see, uh, yeah, that won its bracket is Forbidden Fiber Co's Life Potion. So I'll have where it was before, and here it is now. I'm still not done with this cauldron. <laughs> I'm freaking over it. So I did kind of like, to help break up the cauldron stitching a little bit, I did put some threads up here. I went down to the fire. So this is like the entire right side of the left side of the pattern. Um, this, there does need to be a little like steam tendril that goes out, but other than that, this is pretty much done. And then once I fill this dang square in, which is still probably another hundred freaking stitches, um, it will be all words. And then the biggest candle you have ever seen, um, and I'm honestly debating seeing how long this took me, if I mean, what I'm going to do with that candle. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's so massive. 
Um, this is 40 count. <laughs> this is 40 count, which is why it was in the tiny X's bracket. Um, this is 40 count, one over two. Um, and the fabric is Forbidden Fiber Co. And it is Sanderson Sisters. Or no, just Sanderson, that's the color. And I love this color. And honestly, this is the bottom. And I think I need to free the fabric on this a little bit. I think I need to, because this is great. I love this fabric. It's not the fabric that's hurting me, it's the cauldron. <laughs> so this one, the first bracket with 283 stitches in an hour, because I wasn't really reading a pattern. Um, next up was the Halloween bracket. So first contestant <laughs> in the Halloween bracket is Bonaventure Morning Sampler by Park Hopper Bart. And hopefully you're seeing a photo of where it was. And you will see this was the winner of its of the Halloween bracket. This is where I got. I'm so happy about this. I this is one of those ones this has ever happened to you where like you actually put a little bit of time into something and you're like, oh, this is smaller than I expected. Why has it been languishing for so long? Um, yeah, I freaking cranked down this column. This was over two stitching challenge hours because since it won, it competed again. So yeah, you can see where it was before this. So all this column and the letters are, are new. And this is the bottom of the pattern. I mean, crazy, right? It's not that big. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, if two hours of stitching got me all this, that's, that's pretty exciting. So, um, yeah, this is on a 32 count, uh, fangirl fibers fabric that I believe now owning, having recently purchased a like Zweiger and a Wichelt, I think this is Wichelt fabric. And I think that's why it is painful to stitch on, but we're too far in now. Um, so that got 250, that one with 259 stitches in an hour. And it competed against, so our loser of the Halloween bracket was, oh yeah, which, sorry, I'm still showing bags, my 805 stitcher bag. Both of these are in 805 stitcher bags. Um, put you here. The loser of this was um, Winchester House. Um, which this one, you will see, it has pretty good progress because I actually ended up working on it beyond my challenge hour. So during the challenge hour, you'll see where it was before we started this a very sad, sad start. Um, this is where it is now. So it actually got a really good bit of work into it. Um, but this was not all done in an hour. <laughs> so it got 238 stitches in an hour, which I think, yeah, were, I kind of started around this border because I figured that was repetitive and not too fussy to count in that house because this is a paper chart. So um, yeah, happy about it once again. I mean, this is what I told myself when I started these were that these were not very big patterns and yet, <laughs> so I think October is gonna look a little bit different. I'm going to, with all my heart, try to not talk myself into starting freaking 13 patterns for Halloween, but I have failed that ambition the last two years. So that one lost. Um, so now our other two seeds. First up was the Christmas bracket. And or I guess I'll show, I need to show the loser first. <laughs> I'm saying it so aggressively. Loser. I love all these patterns. <laughs> Once again, the, this exercise in March is really nice to get you excited about all your projects again. And if it doesn't inspire joy and excitement, a great time to reevaluate those projects. So I stitched on Stitchy Prose's Mary Nyamis Biscornu. I have the Halloween version as completed, so it needs its companion. And this is where it was before. I'm trying to see, I'm like, which way did I do this? This one also got a little bit of extra stitching outside of the challenge hour. But this is where we are now. 
Um, so this got 263 stitches in the hour. I put the little snowflakes in and kind of did the other side of this motif and started up ooh, where the presents will go here. Um, this is 32 count vintage country mocha. Um, I don't think I said on the Winchester house that was another 32 count, I believe, which old fangirl fiber fabric. So that's another reason I think those are both languishing is I, I don't care for the fabric on either of them, to be honest with you, but we're committed. I could have restarted Winchester house for sure. But I didn't. This is in just like a, this is in the Marie Kondo container store <laughs> collab bag. Um, great. And then the winner of the Christmas bracket, um, was To All a Good Night um, by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I freaking adore this. Also, I just realized we are 40 minutes in and I am still showing you projects. That's fine. <laughs> um, oh yeah, where's my board? This is a good candidate for the board. So hopefully you're looking at where it was before. And this is where it is now. Um, so I will, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and spoil it. Uh, this one, yeah, got multiple rounds and did some, uh, outside challenge hour stitching. Um, but I am so happy to finally see these houses pop out. It just looks so cool. I have the start of Santa's sleigh. Um, but the deal is, is that <laughs> this is only about 60% done because, from here up it is full coverage <laughs> almost full coverage like the only place there are not stitches are yeah like this kind of negative space so like the roofs are not stitched and all of this snow is not stitched so this is stitched on a 28 count white opalescent fabric I don't know if you can see any shimmer in it but um it is opalescent it is really beautiful and this is it's a fun one like I said love stitching on white 28 count I flew so it's first challenge hour it got 330 stitches which is maybe the fast the most stitches I've ever stitched in an hour period so that's living in a little women black needle society bag and lastly our last challenge set <laughs> I had to stretch to come up with a unifying theme and the theme is <laughs> vessels I'm calling it so uh the first one <laughs> so silly um so the first one is Salem Sisters Apothecary by Primrose Cottage Stitches so there's a cauldron on here so that is a vessel there's also some little you know jars beakers and the like um And this is where that one is. Oh yeah, and hopefully you're seeing before. Let me put it over here in case I'm, I'm messing myself up. Um, so this is where that is. Great progress. This one got 263 stitches in an hour. Um, and this is on 32 count doubloon by Picture This Plus. Um, yep. So again, love it. Like these ones. And this one is living in a gifted bag from Shandria Carol Stitches on YouTube and Shandria Carol on Instagram. So that one lost. And then lastly, the last competitor was tea glass by eight pixel i put this up last time um and here's where it was before and here's where it is now i don't even know if you will see much of a difference <laughs> even though it got good stitching in it um so it got 294 stitches in the first challenge hour i'm trying to think of where i went on this I think it's just all right here pretty much and like coming down over here on the bottom of this glass that I worked on. Um, 
yeah this one I have come to find that my problem with it is that because I'm stitching this on 16 count Ada that uh, my friend and I dyed. This is a piece that I am making for my friend. So we dyed it so I don't have to stitch the background. But there's, there's a number of colors in this pattern that I feel are not necessary. So for example, in this section, there is both 3865 and Blanc. And while like I literally <laughs> I know where some of those stitches are supposed to be and I can't tell so I think I'm going to stop using both and just choose one moving forward because it's there's a lot of colors that yeah it's just like they look so close and I feel like for as much as this pattern might look like there's block stitching there's not <laughs> There's not as much block stitching as you would think and that frustrates me and so yeah I am I get frustrated reading this pattern but do it for my friend because she just bought a house and so now um, she's like I need my decorations but this isn't another Marie Kondo bag. Um, yes so from there that's I just wasn't really sure so that means that for our second round I had Life Potion versus the Bonaventure Morning Sampler and Life Potion 1. And then I had To All A Good Night versus the Tea Glass Pattern and To All A Good Night 1. And then To All A Good Night ended up being the winner of the whole thing. So that was exciting. And that's why there's so many stitches in that project. <laughs> Um, and I worked on it a little bit after I finished that last stitching hour, but that, you know, it's, it's tough to beat stitching on white 28 count fabric with a lot of film. <laughs> that's a, that's a rough one to compete against. So that was awesome. Very happy with the progress on all those and glad to see those projects out and about. Whew. Okay. That's all the stitching. That is all the projects. Um, I have some plans, a little bit of haul, and then just some, you know, general thoughts on the Gilmore Girls Retreat, but let's keep it moving. 47 minutes in. So, uh, yeah, for April, I'm hoping to continue with the two sales that I have going. So the Celebrate All Year Sal, which I said, yeah, is National Astronomy Month this month, and then the Kiss and Tell Collective motif from... The Stitch for Pride piece. Um, I also, <laughs> I have resisted the Lola Crow um, stitch alongs thus far, but Deadly Aquarium has got me. So I did buy the Deadly Aquarium stitch along and I have two fabrics that I'm currently considering. So I'm going to put these up in case you have um, opinions. I would love to hear them. I'm going to, for the most part, I think I'm waiting until we see the frame. But uh, yes, and apparently both of my options that are in stash are 40 count. So I guess I'm a 40 count stitcher now. Um, so this is Atomic Ranch's Eucalyptus. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of more modeled, more green. And I, as far as I understand, the model, the model itself is more on the green side. So I'm leaning towards this one. Um, but then my other option that's a little bit more blue, comparatively, this is Wild Mist um, by Atomic Ranch as well. So these are kind of my two contenders. I haven't, I did buy the flosses that I didn't have, but I was kidding up for Winter and Stars Hollow. So I haven't like pulled them and looked at this yet. But yeah, like I said, I think it's gonna just take seeing it all seeing the frame, seeing kind of the vibe all together, but I am jazzed because I convinced my brother's, my little brother's um, girlfriend who has done a little cross-stitching and when they came to visit me last summer, I was showing her all my stuff and trying to get her excited and I sent her home with a little needle minder she wanted um, and I sent her the, I thought it would be up her alley, that it'd be something she would like. Um, but she's been more of a monogamous stitcher and she's working on kind of a big project. So I didn't think she would go for it, but I sent her the listing for the Deadly Aquarium sale and she was like, I bought it. <laughs> 
So I'm hoping this weekend when I'm back in Austin, I will um, take her down to Golden Needle and maybe, you know, maybe buy her some fabric or something. I'm going to, I'm going to rope her into this one way or the other. So I'm really excited to help her kit up her first stitch along and, and do that with her. So I'm excited about that. But Deadly Aquarium is dropping this month. And then I have my two new whip goat calls. So I don't have these here, but I'll just put pictures up, I guess. So again, neither one of the called numbers is a new start. Thank God. <laughs> um, they're both fully finishes and they shouldn't be too bad. So the first one is to fully finish Moonlight Kraken by Lola Crow. And this one I think is just going to go into a hoop. And similarly, I'm supposed to finish another Bird Crush Bird, which those need to go into hoops as well. I did get, I mentioned in my last floss tube, I had purchased three more modern hoopla frames um, and they were seemingly lost. There has been, if you want to go down a little rabbit hole, Metro Atlanta's USPS has like, it kind of all but collapsed at the end of February. <laughs> Um, my understanding is that they had a bunch of different distribution centers that were servicing the metro area and due to funding they collapsed them all down to one center and it was not very well planned how that was going to go and about 200 people walked out on the job um, and so mail piled up. You can imagine metro Atlanta is what five something million people. Um, four or five million people so mail piles up quickly and so a lot of my packages USPS it was just like they would go and they would sit there and so like if I was lucky things would get delayed about a week um and then my hoopla frame sat there about a month so I finally because it seemed like I was getting some mail I put out a missing mail request and because I knew it was there I had gone to my post office because it had sat for a while and he was like, I can see it's down there. It's just, is it going to get out? And my local post office even, he was like, I can't even get stamps right now. <laughs> um, so I did open up a missing mail request and they did find it and it did make its way to me. It did take one more lap like out and back in the facility, but it did come to me. So we have hoopla frames. Um, I might hold off on ordering again until I can... Uh until it levels out a little bit, but things have been fairly consistent. Like I said, things are usually delayed, but they are showing up. So that's something. And UPS seems good because even though a lot of times I think like UPS and FedEx will hand off to USPS, that handoff is happening at the post office, like a local post office and not at a distribution center. And that is the key. It's like, if the mail is not going to that distribution center, it's pretty fine. Um, but if it has to go in there, it's just like a roll of the dice, how long it's going to take for it to come out. So <laughs> anyway, if you want to go read up on that, that's been, um, interesting to see <laughs> and it's helped me, uh, you know, not order a ton of stuff, but speaking of ordering things, <laughs> I did buy some stuff. I, so I have a little bit of haul and one of these is related to plans. So I tried to be so good and not buy from um Nashville needlework market I was gonna wait because I I love stitching on digital patterns and I was just like there was a couple things I really liked but I was like just wait till they're digital you don't need to buy them right now but then the Nashville market cookbook so um, I won't show this because there's not a picture of the piece, but basically, um, the Black Needle Society, Katie Landis, uh, March was not only National Umbrella Month, but is National Craft Month. And we got the umbrellas. <laughs> and so Katie designed another pattern that will fit in the Celebrate All Year Sal frame, um, that is National Craft Month. And so it's like kind of in an embroidery, it, you know, it's a circular pattern like the ones that I've shown. So it's in an embroidery hoop and there's floss and scissors and buttons and threads and a thimble and it's very cute. So I really wanted to make sure I got that. But what's hilarious is during the Gilmore retreat, I want, I got really lucky and I won a digital dive 
and I won um, one of the buck the prize buckets at the end. So I actually have two more coming to me. One of them is accounted for, but please stick around because one might be finding its way to you in a giveaway in the future. Um, so I have two more of these coming. <laughs> but the other thing I bought, so once I cracked and was like, okay, I have to buy the cookbook because I need that pattern. There was one other chart that like just really meant so much. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And that is Stitchy Prose's Cardinal's Promise. Um, so this says, when you see a cardinal, know this promise is true. Oh my God, why am I emotional? I'm never far away and I'm always here with you. So my mom and I really ascribe to like the cardinals thing. I wore my little bracelet today to talk about this. My mom gave me this. So my maternal grandmother, my mom's mom passed away in 2015. Jeez. Um, and that was a rough one. I have been extremely blessed that I've not had many close deaths in my life thus far. And I uh, said, so this one still gets to me. So she passed in March and I debated starting in March, but I was like, nah, let's not celebrate that day. Her birthday's in April. So April 11th, I will be starting this piece for my mom. Um, and since it is going to go to my mom, I was like, well, obviously I deserve all the little accoutrement that Holly of Stitchy Pros came out with. So I did get the fancy cottage garden threads and I got the thread holder. So it's always here with you as well as the little needle minder. I love this needle minder, like how it's kind of negative space because I feel like I don't like big chunky needle minders where my needle completely, um, like the entire length of the needle can sit on it because I feel like I'm fussing to pick it up. So I love that this is like, has negative space in it because I feel like it'll be really easy to pick your needle up. I don't know, does anyone else think about that? So, and just cause I'm so excited about this one, I pulled, I don't even, I think I must've won this in a fight night, but I think I'm gonna do this fabric from Be Stitch Me. I feel like this is really good. Um, this is a 36 count. So I think that will look really nice. So it calls for um, five cottage garden threads and two DMCs. So I need to make sure I have 350. But so the colors are bottle brush. That red is so good. Uh, ivy. Pickle. It's a great pickle color. And then hot coffee and hearth. It's a gray, variegated gray, gray black. So that one's really meaningful. I'm excited. I told my mom about it. I sent her a picture, but um, yeah, I'm excited about that one. Very special. Okay, so that was, so that's the last of my plans is I wanna start that on April 11th and then my stitch alongs pretty much and then my whip go calls. So otherwise for haul, um, I did score Dean Kari's spring fling box. I am ecstatic. I was out running errands that morning and honestly forgot. And then I came home and that was like the top of my email and it was 30 minutes past the, the launch time. And I went and all the linen boxes were sold out and I've never bought one before. So that, uh, this year I was like, I want to do it. I want to buy it. Like the dragon theme last year was spectacular. I didn't even know what the theme was this year, but I was like, I'm going to buy it. Um, so the linen boxes were sold out and I saw that Ada was an option. I bought the Ada box. I refreshed the page and it said sold out. So either I got the last one or like me and the person who got the last box were like, checking out at the same time. It was extremely close. They they really did sell out in about 30 minutes. Um, but I was even more ecstatic to realize the theme for this year's box is medieval cats. <laughs> if there was a year for me to get it, this was the year. So I am so jazzed, so grateful that that worked out. Um, so that was a buy. I know, unfortunately, I was like, I, I debate talking about those because it's like, you can't get them. But I did get the sprinkling box. I also purchased these 
trans day of visibility chart because this is spectacular and proceeds were going to support Dee's um, gender affirming surgery that is upcoming. You can go to their channel if you want to learn more about that, but happy to support. So that was a great purchase. That was a one day only thing. And then lastly, I have to blame Stephanie at Cross Stitch the Globe for this one. Stephanie has been showing off and I keep meaning to message Stephanie. So if I haven't messaged you by the time you see this video, I am sorry, but I keep meaning to message Stephanie because she has shared about how she lived in Bulgaria for a number of years and my partner is Bulgarian and I have been very feebly attempting to learn Bulgarian over the years. It's not going so great. I can read the Cyrillic alphabet and I can sound things out like a toddler <laughs> and when I'm with his family, um, you know, there's kind of mix of, of languages going on. And so it's at a point now that I can generally catch like the topic that they're on, but I, I can't speak it by any means. Like uh, listening is going up, but not much else. So anyway, all that to say, Stephanie has been featuring a Al Forest chart that is, I'm, hopefully I put it up. I don't remember what it's called, but it's an alphabet um that's really beautiful but not really to my taste and it's ginormous so I was kind of like oh I love the idea of doing one of their Cyrillic charts um I know that there's been a couple and I've thought that that would be cool but it took me like watching her do hers and I was like okay yeah I want to do that I want to do that but not this chart <laughs> um so I picked another freaking massive chart so <laughs> I went on Alforest's website and, you know, typed in alphabet and looked for the charts that they had that are um, in the Latin letters and Cyrillic le letters. So um, this is it. <laughs> this is Autumn Alphabet by Alforest Embroidery. It is freaking stunning. My partner likes it. I did run it by him. Um, not that it's like for him specifically, but something, you know, I hope to display in our home. Um, and he, so he likes it. He approves. It is 432 stitches tall. It doesn't have any business being that tall. What's that about? <laughs> so, um, yeah, because misery loves company, I did talk Jennifer, <laughs> the frog stitcher into starting this with me. We're not going to, we are going to order the threads. Um, so that's going to be a while. And I think the plan is we're going to try to start it in August at the Black Needle Society's in-person retreat because we will be rooming together. Um, so we can kind of like hand off threads and that'll be a start in August. Um, so thanks so much, Stephanie. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited about it. I The more I look at it, the more I'm like, oh gosh, but... I know we're an hour in, but hang with me. If you like Alforest embroidery and digital charts, stay with me. Come back to me. <laughs> this is huge. So I had an inkling about this. I've kind of talked about this before, but I have a better appreciation of what's going on now. So when you look at Alforest charts, you can even go in the free section and look at this. A lot of times you'll see on their digital charts that there will be a little sticker icon at the top and it says PDF plus Saga, okay? When I tell you, I thought that Saga was them letting us know that they wrote a cute little story about the piece. Because <laughs> a lot of things are based on like folklore and stuff. So I was like, oh yeah, like, oh, they wrote a little story about it. No, Saga is a cross-stitch app like Pattern Keeper, like Markup RXP. Um, it is a, per, a, pa, a application you have to purchase. Um, it is a one-time fee though, like Pattern Keeper. It is not like Markup, which is a subscription-based app. Owl Forest files, because some of the Owl Forest files, like my Dinosaur Forest, for example, will go into Pattern Keeper. And the trick is, so you can kind of tell this and ascertain this for yourself if you have a bunch of digital Alforest files. If the chart has one grid per page, it will load into Pattern Keeper. Some of them, like with Autumn Alphabet, because I bought the digital chart, 
if there are sometimes there was like two separate small grids on one page and markup can't handle it and pattern keeper can't handle it saga can <laughs> um and I will not bore you with the details, but when you buy their charts, Saga is an embedded file in the PDF. And I am going to direct you again to my girl Shandria at Shandria Carol Stitches. She made a very nice video showing you how to do it. And she had to endure me being a complete goob over the weekend when I was like, you said it was embedded, but it won't upload into the app. There is a step. <laughs> She was like, oh, can you send me screenshots? Like, did you watch the video? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I watched the video. I had not watched the video recently. <laughs> if you go about two and a half minutes in, she explains very nicely with like a screen recording. You can see everything that's going on. She uses a free chart off their website. You can walk through the whole thing with her. Um, and it's a pretty cool app. I have not actually purchased it, but over the retreat, uh, Jennifer the frog stitcher was um messing with it and there's a lot to like about it um so again I'm gonna send you over to Shandria to go get the deets but there's a lot to like about it there's some more stats and more functionality than pattern keeper I've never really used markup um but there's 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 something to love if you're a big Alphora stitcher if you are not Maybe that's not a cost that's worth it to you, but that is nice. And because then I refer back to what I was talking about originally, if you own paper charts from Al Forest and you want digital copies, you can email them and ask them for it. But when you do that, you will not get a PDF. You only get a Saga file. So if you want digital, if you want free digital access to your paper patterns from Al Forest, you have to contact them and the only way you're going to get it is through Saga. So that is my soapbox. <laughs> it's my PSA. Um, if you're a big digital stitcher and a big Alphora stitcher, um, I think it's worth it. Because the app, we, did, we even compared and contrasted like Google Play Store versus Apple Store. So I believe it does work on Apple devices. So on Apple, I think people saw it for like 1050-ish or 10.99 and then on Android you know, on the Google store it was like 12.50 I want to say so it's a little more expensive on Android but anyway okay so much stuff take my water sip <laughs> okay and then lastly I um yeah just wanted to chat a little bit about Gilmore Girls a little for posterity so the casual retreat that the Black Needle Society hosts, which right now the theme was Gilmore Girls, as I said, next will be Downton Abbey. Um, the theme is much more about like community and charity and stuff. So every year we had a different charity that we donated to. Um, and so donations work by, in the stitching challenges, um, every 5,000 stitches stitched by the group is $25 that the Black Needle Society will donate to the organization, which this year was Johns Hopkins. Um, and then us as stitchers, we um, can choose to voluntarily, you know, donate to the charity. And for every $2 you spend, you get a raffle ticket into their like bit of basket prizes. So there was five baskets. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how that goes. So across the challenges, I have our totals here. We, as a retreat, stitched 190,442 stitches. Freaking crazy. Which means that uh, the Black Needle Society donated $950 to Johns Hopkins. And we, as stitchers, donated $2,543 for our raffle tickets basically so we cleared three thousand dollars that we donated this weekend um which was really fantastic and even more fantastic i won one of the bit of basket prizes so i won the like owl's pancake world themed one so i got i mean i'll certainly show you all when it comes in but there's like the like the gilmore cookbook and a great um 
bag and I'm getting y'all I like black this out I am getting custom hand knit socks from CC at Java Pearl or GGKCS is their YouTube um channel and they are Java Pearl designs I believe on Instagram but CC is going to knit me socks in the ice cream queen colorway of yarn so that's the food tie-in which reminds me I need to message them so thank you for that <laughs> reminder um so a really fantastic prize I am blown away I so having done this retreat for three years I have never pulled one of the big prizes so very exciting and it felt very meaningful to win a big prize when I had my big finish as well to actually stitch the piece during the retreat. So that was all very exciting. Um, and yeah, I also want to issue my blanket apology to anyone I personally victimized this weekend and convinced to buy something. Whether you got talked into buying the Saga app, whether you got talked into buying a pattern, whether I was selling the Notion template to you. I did not mean to be such an influencer over the weekend, but I just want everyone to have all the tools available to them that they want okay is that so wrong um yeah that is all i have since it's over this is over an hour long um i will just list i'm not gonna do a whole review but i the two games that have been occupying my time when i've not been stitching this month uh are hello kitty island adventure <laughs> which is an Apple Arcade exclusive, which I really hate that for it. Um, the only reason I have Apple Arcade is because I purchased a new phone in uh, December and that came with three months of free Apple Arcade. And I had heard tell that Hello Kitty Island Adventure was popping. And I was like, well, I'll try it. Like certainly I'll be done with it in three months. I will not be done with it in three months. Um, so we'll have to, decisions will have to be made when my three months are up. <laughs> um, but it is extremely fun. And my hot tip there, hopefully I don't bump the camera here. If you play any games on your iPhone device and you know, if you're Android, I would check this out too. <laughs> Switch Joy-Cons will attach to your phone. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. When I found this out, this was a game changer. <laughs> so now I will have my phone like on a little phone stand. I connect my little Joy-Cons and I can play Hello Kitty <laughs> with my little Joy-Cons <laughs> in the morning. Um, There you go. And then other than that, I started The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which is an older game that was remastered for Switch. And... It, uh, it's going well. I've heard really good things about that game. I am struggling. I would not recommend this for someone who has not dealt with, um, like moving a camera and fighting and all that stuff because it is converted to a controller, but it was originally for Wii. And there are aspects of it that, you know, were originally designed for motion controls, which technically you can, like, I could play it with the Joy-Cons like this, but I don't really prefer to do that for games like Zelda. Um, and the Switch motion sensor is not as good as the Wii one. Like, clearly we perfected the gyroscope in 2007. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so the, I don't want to use the motion controls, but using, trying to do motion control like things on a controller can be a real headache. The controls are a bit of a pain and it's a growing pain, but I'm getting there. Um, so I am having a good time, but I don't know that I would recommend that one, um, as like a first Zelda game if you don't have more gaming background, I guess. I think I would have been extremely frustrated and would have given up if I had not played some other games first. So those are the two I have going right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> this was a blast as per usual. My throat is starting to go. <laughs> um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything else. Oh yeah. Hold on. Lastly, if you're still here, bless you. Um, 
So I was doing okay stitching wise for March, but then doing 9,000 stitches on Winter and Stars Hollow the last few days of the month really switched it up. So my stitch total for the month was 19,092 stitches. 19k so March really turned out to be a much more prolific month than I had planned um but yeah hoping that April feels a little more chill with all these sales who knows just you know I was like ah, I don't really think there's gonna be any starts in April it's like just just four just the four starts that's regular normal <laughs> oh okay I'm getting warm it's warming up here um Hope you are all not dying of allergies and pollen and getting some nice weather wherever you are um, if it's spring. And yeah, we'll see if I decide to switch it up. And I mean, I need to stop talking. <laughs> I'll see you when I see you. And oh my gosh, I just, there was so many updates. I don't think I've said in the formal floss tube, I was selected to be a rep for the Black Needle Society. Um, which means that you will now be seeing bespoke unboxings of the bi-monthly subscription boxes, which they will send to me to share with you. The big boxes like Gilmore Girls, or if you've ever seen me unbox the Nice List box, those are still boxes that I purchase with my own money. Um, but yeah, so those videos are there. If unboxings are not your jam, totally understand. Um, but I will be putting information about like the vault and stuff in those uh, videos, important Black Needle Society dates um and yeah really excited to have the opportunity to to work with uh this group so that is more than enough of me talking and i hope to see you in the next one have a good one guys bye